All right, so the double ear concept's been around for a while. There's been a few people that have done it successfully. Um, typically, I tell growers, we don't want a double ear, uh, and I'll explain that. In the last four or five years of really trying to go out there and search for this double ear, first you've got to have the right genetic family, right? And then you've got to have everything else work right. But typically, a double ear, if you, if you measure the same stalk cir circumference of a plant, so in other words, you're taking a, a stalk that's, you know, whatever, let's just call it an inch around for easy figure inch around and you're looking at that and it has two ears and then you found a, a plant that was an inch around in circumference of so the same type of plant same healthy uh, same health of that plant and it's got one ear typically we we outweigh our two years with that one and the reason that happens so often is because we don't know how to keep that second ear um, we can when, when we do a good job on the early side of a corn plant, what it does is tells itself, man, I'm, I'm so happy. I, I can have tillers, I can have extra ears, I can do all these things. All of a sudden, at some point in that season, that plant has to tell itself to shut off. It's gotta tell which shut that thing off and which utilize the, the energy and the nutrition we put into that ear and take it back and put it into our main ear because we don't have enough to fulfill the needs. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that that plant hit a stressful period, that means that plant thought it hit a stressful period. So it might have very well have filled that second ear, but for some reason, roughly at that time when we're starting to see kernel set, we start to draw away from that second ear and we shrink those kernels down. Well, at that point, actually what that did is hurt our overall yield because we've put the effort and emphasis into building it and then we try to extract it back out, but we're never 100% effective at pulling that energy and nutrition back out of that sink. I mean, really, if you look at the way that the corn plant's designed, it really is designed to put an ear at a lot of those different nodes on that corn plant. And, you know, we uh, as an industry are happy with one good size ear, um, but it's, it's genetically built or designed to put one at every uh, node there on that plant. And what determines whether we keep that or not is, is how fat and sassy or how happy it really is. And if it goes through any sort of stress, its defense mechanisms are gonna be built to say, get rid of the secondary ear and keep the main ear. And that's what it's gonna do. It will then turn all of its attention and focus on making sure that it maintains that main dominant ear and will slough off everything else. Yeah, I think it comes back to how much sunlight can get to that ear leaf, right? How, how, how much sunlight can touch that entire plant? You guys have all seen it, but if we get a you know gap in a row, what happens? We've got a lot of potential in that single plant. Um, it, it also comes back to, to how well you feed it. It comes back to the genetic family again. But, but what we do is we don't look at it as a total yield base. So in other words, a lot of uh, companies look at, so I'm, I'm shooting for 300 bushel corn. So they have a factor in their mind and they take that 300 and divide it by six and a half or seven. And that tells me how many thousands I need to plant. What I really focus on is not only that method, but I also tweak that method based on how much nutrition we have, how much mineralization potential that soil has, and how well it's gonna feed that plant as far as energy goes. So again, high carbon soils, uh, high nutrition soils, typically can get by with less population than those soils beside them that are going for the same yield level.